Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I seek the protection from, of Allah from Shaitan, the rejected enemy. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. With Allah's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer. In Alhamdulillah, all praises are for Allah. Nasta'inahu wa nasta'firahu. We seek guidance and forgiveness from him. Wa na'uzi bilahi min sharuri and fustina. We also seek refuge in him from the evils of our own selves. Man yadihi allahu falla mudel mudilla lahu wa main yudil falla adi Allah. Whoever Allah guides, no one can miss God. Whoever he lets go astray, no one can put him back on track. Wa ashadu an la ilaha wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. We testify that there is no God but Allah, and we testify that Muhammad is Allah's servant and messenger. I greet you, dear beloved, study al Islam guests, in the Muslim greeting of peace, understanding that true and real peace comes only from Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum. I also want to say that understanding that peace, having and knowing that peace, obligates us to keep and maintain the peace. Again, we welcome you to the Study Al Islam series as we study the miraculous ascension of our dear Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. I am your presenter today, Quran Shakir of Atlanta, Georgia. We want to give a little background and remind us that over the course of the past six months, varied Muslim leaders and scholars, students of Imam W.D. Muhammad, have engaged us in a study of the night journey and the ascension of Prophet Muhammad, he see upon him, of 1400 years ago, properly called the Ifra and the Mirage. We are grateful to all of our presenters and scholars, to the coordinator, Sister Fisher Muhammad, and to you, our esteemed brothers and sisters across the U.S. and around the globe for tuning in and listening. Today, we focus on level six, where Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, met Prophet Musa. As we have mentioned in the past, the ascension has two parts. The first part, the Isra, is the journey to Masjid al-Aqsa, the furthest mosque in Jerusalem from Mecca, Masjid al-Haram. The second part of the journey is the Mirage, the ascension to heaven, the highest part of the horizon. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, traveled to the seventh heaven, and on each level, each heaven, he met eight different prophets, which is what we are studying and have been studying. Our dear beloved leader, Imam Muhammad, told us that the ascension of the prophet, in the ascension of the prophet, there are eight. He said that because if you count from Adam, who is one, Jesus and Yahya, that's three, Yusuf, four, Idris, five, Aaron, six, Musa, seven, and Ibrahim, eight. And each of them were on a level. Um, Jesus and Yahya on level two together. So he asked, how many levels do you have? Seven. You have seven levels, eight persons. There was an eighth or ninth person who ascended the seven heavens, seven levels and greeted the eight persons. Eight holds up the throne, he said to us. If we know and understand that there are thousands of prophets and only 25 that are reported in the final revelation, the Quran, we must ask what message is there for us and each of these dear prophets that we are presented with? Why are these eight out of the 25? As Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, met the prophets in each of the heavens. He exchanged greetings with them. As-salamu alaykum was the greeting that was offered. And it was used by all of the prophets as it is used by us today, as we use today when we opened even this session today. And that is to declare the real peace comes only from the one creator. So in each meeting, the prophets expressed their faith in Prophet Muhammad's prophethood as well. They called him my brother, with the exception of two, Adam and Ibrahim.
Elohim. Today, as we study level six, the meeting with Prophet Musa, I will make this more of a foundation about the history of Prophet Musa and a historical overview of Prophet Musa. Inshallah, some of the other presenters will share important spiritual connections in the upcoming weeks. In Surah 2, Ayat 92, we are told, And indeed, Musa, or Moses, came to you with clear proofs. Yet you worshipped the calf after he left, and you were Zalimun, polytheists, and wrongdoers. I want to begin by saying that after the two prophets, after the two prophets, Prophet Musa and Prophet Muhammad met on level six. They had exchanged the greetings, I salam alaikum, and Prophet Musa had expressed his faith in Prophet Muhammad's prophethood. Right after that, Musa started to weep. This is the story we are told. And when he was asked why, he replied, a young man has come after me, and more of his followers were into paradise than my followers. What we know with that is that until the coming of Islam, Prophet Musa, Prophet Moses, had had the largest following of any prophet. So Musa cried tears of joy because he loved Prophet Muhammad. He loved the idea that there was now someone bringing in more people to honor and serve Allah. So as we move further into the journey, we will see this love and we will see this compassion that Prophet Musa uh, had for Prophet Muhammad and his followers. Prophet Muhammad and Angel Jibril, after meeting with Prophet Musa, then ascended to heaven. So let's look at Prophet Musa and his history. Prophet Musa was one of the five prophets of Allah that was given scripture. He was given a special book of rules called the Torah or the Torah. Prophet Musa or Moses is mentioned more in the Quran than any other individual. And his life is narrated and recounted more than that of any other prophet. Some report that he is mentioned 136 times in the Quran. Additionally, we know that Moses or Musa was the brother of Prophet Harun Aaron. And Harun is Moses' older brother. We know that at the time the Prophet Musa was born, that it was a time of great turmoil and grief in Egypt, which is where they are from. And that during that time of his birth, Prophet Moses' birth, was the time that the king fell told the, uh, his, his leaders to kill all male babies as they're born. So Musa's mother was in a, a state of fear as she carried him during this time. And so we also know that Moses had a speech impediment, and he was not as eloquent as his brother Aaron, who was born at a time when there was not so much turmoil and grief at the birth of a son. It is through the story of Prophet Moses that we gain appreciation for many aspects of life. And that's one of them, just the way that we carry ourselves as we carry our babies in our wombs. And when I say our, I mean the male and the female, because the male has a responsibility to the female as she carries the baby. So we know that whenever Prophet Moses is mentioned in the Quran or in the narration of the Prophet Muhammad, you see upon him, something important is about to be described. So when we're looking, now we can start to really notice how there's something important about to be described. So from Prophet Moses, we learn how to learn. This is one of the things we get. This is the description of the description that we get. From how? That is from his experience with the killer. The wise man. This story includes the fact that Moses got up to deliver a speech before the children of Israel, and he was asked, Who is the most learned person among the people? And he replied, I am the most learned. Allah admonished him, but he did not ascribe knowledge to Allah alone. So Allah revealed to him 
at the junction of the two seas, there's a slave of ours who is more learned than you. And Moses asked, Oh my Lord, how can I meet him? And the story continues to show how Musa did not have the patience to learn from the wise man, and the man told him, we must part. So there's more to this story, but I'm giving you, as I said, this history, this foundation of who Moses was in his history. My point is that this is an important story that teaches us about listening to the wise among us. From Prophet Yusuf, we learn to worship. And we have many aspects of worship that are presented to us as we study his story. From him, we learn law and governance. In fact, it is considered that this is the level where the focus is on governance. So he receives the Torah, the Ten Commandments, and these are things that govern a community. Also, we are given the revelation that says, In my presence, remove your shoes. In Surah 20, Ayat 12. But this is a part of governance as well. So we know that we remove our shoes when we go to serve and worship Allah in our prayers. We also hear, and it's not just with Musa, but because we're on him, we're going to emphasize it here. We also know that in Surah 20, Ayat 15, we learn that every soul receives its reward by the measure of its endeavor. So we know that things for us are lorded out to us according to what we put into it. This is where we get this in this story of Musa. We learn confidence. Prophet Musa was challenged with a speech impediment, and he sought the help of his brother, Harun. This is where he gained his own confidence, understanding his strength and his strengths and his challenges. We learn leadership because that's a part of being a good leader, being able to acknowledge the skill set of those in our midst. We learn faith and that Allah is our best provider. We learn business. We learn relationships. Prophet Musa, in fact, in uh, Surah al Qasas, verse 26, said, we can have conditions for marriage. And that, so the alpha words from that story. So we learn about relationships. We learn about marriage itself. So in Musa, we learn many things. We learn about believing in miracles. Prophet Moses has nine most famous known miracles. And we learn this in, in fact, the story that talks about the night journey. And in Surah 17, Ayat 101, as declared in the Quran, it says, We granted Moses nine clear signs. Ask the children of Israel about that. When these signs came forth, Pharaoh said to him, Moses, I think that you are bewitched. And as we know, the nine signs here have also been mentioned in Surah Al-Araf, Ayat 133. And these nine, um, these nine would be then one, the staff which turned into a monster snake. Two, Moses, um, his bright hand, his bright hand was shown like the sun. Three, the public defeat of the sorcery of the magicians. Four, the universal famine. Five, the storm. Six. The locust, seven, lice, eight, frogs, and nine, the rain of blood. Of course, the miracles of Moses are not restricted to those only, but these are the most well-known, the most famous. He has some other miracles, too. So it is through the life story of Moses that we learn that Allah is the best protector. Allah protected Moses by saving him from being killed by Pharaoh, by saving him from drowning in the river, by having a good woman like Queen Asia, the wife of the Pharaoh, find the basket and keep him, and by having him go up safely in the Pharaoh's own palace. Allah even made the sea split in two so that Prophet Moses could cross it. So Allah was his protector. So let's um, look a little closer at these um, 
ideas of being the protector because I think this is important for us. Sometimes we may be, begin to think that I'm not protected or it's only something that's in the Quran. It's not in reality and it's not something that happened and that will happen for me now. But if we understand and know that the Quran is a book for all time, then we know that the lessons in the book are for us to take with us now and forever. From that time to now, in fact, we're told that um, the, the later servants will be the better servants, but that will be us. We are the ones to which Moses wept as he talked about the, um, the fact that Prophet Muhammad will have more servants entering the paradise. So in saving Prophet Moses from being killed by the Pharaoh, as history tells us, Canaan, and we're going back now, so Canaan, Prophet Yaqub and his family were living in Canaan, the ancient, ancient Palestine, including other adjoining place, uh, places. And then Egypt is where Prophet Yaqub's other son, Yusuf, was the ruler. When Yusuf invited his father to come to Egypt, all the children of Yaqub came from Canaan and settled in Egypt. The people in Egypt loved Prophet Yusuf as he was kind and gentle to them. So both Prophet Yaqub and Prophet Yusuf died and were buried in Yusuf, I'm excuse me, in Egypt. Time passed by, so slowly people changed. They became wicked and stopped worshiping a lot. They also changed their attitude towards the family Israel, the Israelites that were living in Egypt. Some of the Egyptians started looking at the Israelites as foreigners as they had come from Canaan. The descendants of ancient Egypt family called are called Copts or the Coptic. So Pharaoh, the name for the ruler in the land of Egypt, considered the Copts um, to be the born rulers and that the Bani Israelites were born to serve. So he believed that they were better, the Copts, Coptics were better, and they were born to rule, whereas the Bani Israeli, Israelis were born to serve. So Pharaoh thus had declared himself high and mighty, so much so that he thought he was God. And we see this in the Quran, and, and many of us have heard this story before. So the Israelites did not accept this, that Pharaoh was God, and Pharaoh was angered by this. And this is when he decided, I need to do something. And so a Coptic priest told the Pharaoh, that a child will be born among the band of Israel, and that is when the kingdom will be lost to him. In rage and madness, Pharaoh ordered the killing of all male children of Van Israel. This history is important for us to note and understand as we understand Prophet Moses. He was born during this time of cruelty to baby boys. The protection is that Musa, the child destined to destroy the Pharaoh's kingdom, was born and was protected. He was protected by the grace of Allah. How? Allah sent inspiration to his troubled mother who feared for the life of her child. He sent the inspiration and he protected him by not letting him drown in the river. By that I mean, in the protection of Musa, Allah inspired the mother of Musa who was a spiritual woman. And the Quran says in Surah al Qasas I had said it, and we inspired the mother of Musa, telling, suckle him. But when you fear for him, then cast him into the river, and fear not, nor grieve. Verily we shall bring him back to you, and shall make him one of our messengers. So she obeyed. She put him in the basket, and it floated down the river Nile. Pharaoh's palaces were on the bank of the river Nile. This protection is followed by another protection. So here he is on the river, a little baby floating in a basket down the river. Again, Allah protected him by having a good woman, Queen Asiya, the wife of the Pharaoh, find the basket and tell her husband we want to keep him. The king and queen noticed that basket, so when they got it out of the river, then they decided they were going to raise the baby in their home. The Queen Asia, who is in history today considered a godly woman. In fact, she is considered one of the four perfect women in history. She loved the child. 
And um, Pharaoh started to have doubt as he saw this baby being raised in his household. And he believed that he might be of the bad Israel, and he wanted to kill him. So according to Quran, uh, in the same surah, al Qasim ayat 9, his wife, Queen Asia, was a protector. So Allah brought this protection to, again, and this is by the grace of Allah, and it reads, And the wife of Pharaoh said, A comfort to the eye for me and for you. Kill him not. Perhaps he may be of benefit to us, or we may adopt him as a son. And they did not perceive that this would be the result of them raising a child in their home that was really bad in Israel. And so Allah protected him. In the meantime, as we know the story, Musa's mother sent her daughter to find out what happened to the child. And Musa, the infant, refused to take the milk from any wet nurse. Musa's sister convinced the queen that she knew of a good wet nurse, and she brought her mother there to be that wet nurse. The Quran proclaims, So did we restore him, Musa, to his mother, that her eye might be comforted, and that she might not grieve, and that she might know that the promise of Allah is true, but most of them know not. This is a reminder to us that the promise of Allah is true, and we have to know that we take protection with Allah from Shaitan, who whispers to us and makes us doubt that Allah is our protector. Again, protection came to the prophet Musa, Musa, having him grow up safely in Pharaoh's own palace. So in the king's palace, Moses grew up as a prince. Although he was in the comfort and luxury of the palace, he was not awed by the riches and the wealth because he grew up witnessing the cruelty of the Pharaoh towards the family Israel, his own people. And he was moved to speak out against the cruelty. So as a young man, he left the home and he went out. He ended up killing a man, and I'm rushing the story because I know, inshallah, it will be explained later, but I'm giving us this overview. So he ended up killing a man and really had to flee. The Quran says the Prophet Musa left Egypt and headed towards Madian, an Arab land, mostly deserts and villages. It did not have the civilization, the castles, and the markets of Egypt. It was a land where the people were safe from Pharaoh's cruel rule. It was there that he met his future wife. And there's another story in that. He lived there for 10 years before returning to his home, Egypt. So on the way back to go home, he came to a fire. He heard a voice and received inspiration. He was commanded to throw his staff, and lo, it became a live snake. And that is also uh, a story that Inshallah will be told. And so he returned to Egypt to free his people from Pharaoh. Allah even made the sea split in two so the prophet Moses could cross safely and escape from Pharaoh and his soldiers who were chasing him. So all of these protections that we're sharing with you shows us how Allah's protection works and can work for us in very ways. Imam Muhammad shared with us that Moses was the chosen leader of a people who were oppressed, and they couldn't live under their oppressors' um, rule. So Moses was chosen to take them to independence and freedom so that they would be under their own authority. Moses was guided with the help of the wise man, who also was guided by God, as we know. He was guided to see how to make the new society work. Moses couldn't do everything. He had certain skills. He was a builder in the house on the land of the Pharaoh, but he didn't know many things. So he was guided with the help of another wise man in his day to give responsibilities to others who had knowledge and skills. Imam Muhammad said um, that Moses said to them, you, metal workers, organize, and you, scribes, organize. So he began to organize all the knowledge and skills and gave assignments to those who had the knowledge and skills. This story of Prophet Musa, inshallah, will be further explained. And so, like Prophet Musa, may we take the lessons 
the lessons that Allah, the most gracious, is our protector, number one. We can survive and endure beyond the top challenges of a tyrant leader who presents himself as God himself. We can endure and be grateful and be able to acknowledge Allah's presence in our lives. We do not have to let circumstances and situations become our hardship and our setback. We can endure and be grateful and able to acknowledge Allah's presence. Hear him when he speaks to us, just as he inspired the mother of Musa. We have to be spiritually aware and ready to receive the message. We must be kind-hearted and prayerful like the wife of the Pharaoh, who is noted as one of the four perfect women because of her ability to be spiritual, even though she lived one of the most notorious of people. When mentioning the fact that Pharaoh thought he was God, I like to remind us of something else that Imam Muhammad shared about being God-like. And, and that's important for us, I think. He said that the Muslim strives to be like his God on a human level. He wants the attributes of his God to shine in his life. He knows he can't be divine. He can't be a God, but he can be a good slave servant, an obedient slave. And I'm saying this as a reminder to us that we can be God-like on a human level, as the Imam said, and let Allah shine in our lives. The night journey and the ascension to the heavens culminated with Prophet Muhammad moving past the utmost boundary and standing in the presence of Allah. Beyond the low tree is the realm of the hereafter, paradise, and the throne of Allah and Allah himself. So this is stories that we have and we've heard, and so we share that to say that the word miraculous does not go far enough in describing the wonder of this ascension of Prophet Muhammad. It is beyond description and beyond imagining. However, we know from the Testament of the Quran, Surah 6, Ayah 103, that the Prophet did not see Allah with his eyes, as Allah tells us in this surah. No vision can grasp him. So as we hear the stories and we hear these things, we always think it back to the Quran for verification and support. We are told also that when Prophet Muhammad met Prophet Musa, that and he went to this uppermost part of heaven, that Allah enjoined 50 prayers on Prophet Muhammad and his followers. So as the Prophet was descending, he passed by Prophet Moses, who requested to know what had been enjoined. When Prophet Muhammad explained that he had been ordered to pray 50 times per day, Moses felt astonished and immediately said, Go back to your Lord and ask for a reduction. And when Allah prescribed 50 prayers, Prophet Muhammad accepted it. And Moses, having had been a great prophet himself, knew what from his, uh, knew what from his followers what people could and could not handle in regards to religious obligations. But he was sure that the followers of Prophet Muhammad would not be able to perform that many prayers. So Prophet Muhammad had knowledge, but Prophet Moses at this time had more experience. And Prophet Muhammad accepted the advice of his brother, his older brother we want to say, Prophet Musa, and he went back to the presence of Allah and asked for a reduction. Allah reduced them by 10 to 40. And we know the story goes on. Prophet Moses asked him what happened. He heard that the reduction was only 10. Prophet Moses sent him back to ask again for a further reduction. This exchange continued until the number of obligatory prayers became five. And again, Prophet Moses suggested a further reduction, saying, Oh, Muhammad, I know people, your nation will not be able to handle it. Go back and ask for the burden on your people to be relieved. And the Prophet answered, No. He felt ashamed to ask for another reduction and said he was satisfied with five daily prayers. A voice rang out saying the prayers have been reduced to five, but they will be rewarded as though they were 50. Imagine that. Allah makes it clear to us that even praying these five prayers can be difficult for some people, but that those who establish the connection and trust they will, and the trust, they will one day meet their Lord and will find it easy. The Quran tells us in 32, I have 45 to 46. 
and seek help and patience and the prayer, and truly it is extremely heavy and hard, except for the true believers in Allah. Those who obey Allah with full submission fear much from his punishment and believe in his promise and in his warnings. They are those who are certain they are going to meet their Lord and that unto him they are going to return. Amin. This miraculous mirage in Isra offers many lessons to us. May we continue to study and learn and grow as worshipers seeking to live this religion to the best of our ability. It has been my pleasure to focus attention on the sixth level of Prophet Moses as we learn from his relics. If anything I have shared today has been offensive or misguided, I ask Allah for forgiveness. And if anything has been a benefit, all of the praise and the glory belongs to Allah, the best to reward and guide. Thank you for your time. I am Quran Shakir. You have been listening to Study Al Islam. May Allah the Merciful continue to guide us and protect us. May we learn the lessons of leadership and spiritual development. May we be like our forerunner, Prophet Moses, and learn to be guided by the wise among us, to accept and acknowledge the protection of Allah, to know the promise of Allah, and know that the promise of Allah is true, and to stay the support following the commands of Allah most gracious, knowing that Allah has power over everything, so he can do anything to protect us from everything. Amen. And I have an announcement for you for my dear beloved the Fitra, and that is, alhamdulillah, we are um, proud to say that the DVD of the conference is now available, and it is a wonderful opportunity for us to preserve our history, so we encourage you to order your copy of the DVD. You can order this historical information by visiting Study, study how islam.com again we thank you so very much for being a part of this study al islam series we welcome you to join us again next sunday at 10 a.m as we continue to focus on level six and may allah the most gracious guide and protect us assalamu alaikum